The Emperor's New Clothes. Many years ago, there lived an emperor who was so fond of his new clothes that he spent all his money on them in order to be beautifully dressed. He did not care about his soldiers. He did not care about the theater. He only liked to go out walking to show off his new clothes. He had a coat for every hour of the day. And just as they say of a king, he is in the council chamber. They always said here, the emperor is in the wardrobe. In the great city in which he lived, there was always something going on. Every day, many strangers came there. One day, two impostors arrived who gave themselves out as weavers, and they said that they knew how to manufacture the most beautiful clothing imaginable. Not only were the texture and the pattern uncommonly beautiful, but the clothes which were made of the stuff to possess this wonderful property that they were invisible to anyone who was not fit for his office or who was unpardonably stupid. Those must indeed be splendid clothes, thought the emperor. If I had them on, I could find out which men in my kingdom are unfit for the office they hold. I could distinguish the wise from the stupid. Yes, the clothes must be woven for me at once. And he gave both the impostors much money so that they might begin their work. They placed two weaving looms and began to do as if they were working, but they had not the least thing on the looms. They also demanded the finest silk and the best gold, which they put in their pockets and worked at the empty looms till late into the night. I should like very much to know how far they've got on with the cloth, thought the emperor. But he remembered when he thought about it that whoever was stupid or not fit for his office would not be able to see it. Now he certainly believed that he had nothing to fear for himself, but he wanted first to send someone else in in order to see how he stood with regard to his office. Everyone in the whole town knew what a wonderful power the cloth had, and they were all curious to see how bad or how stupid their neighbor was. I will send my old and honored minister to the weavers, thought the emperor. He can judge best what the cloth is like, for he is intelligent and no one understands his office better than he. Now, the good old minister went into the hall where the two impostors sat working at the empty weaving looms. Dear me, thought the old minister, opening his eyes wide. I can see nothing, but he did not say so. Both the impostors begged him to be kind as to step closer and asked him if he were not a beautiful texture and lovely colors. They pointed to the empty loom and the poor old minister went forward rubbing his eyes, but he could see nothing for there was nothing there. Dear, dear, thought he, can I be stupid? I have never thought that and no one must know it. Can I be not fit for my office? No, I must certainly not say that I cannot see the cloth. Have you nothing to say about it? Asked one of the men who was weaving. Oh, it's lovely, most lovely answered the old minister, looking through his spectacles. What a texture, what colors. Yes, I will tell the emperor that it pleases me very much. Now we are delighted at that, said both the weavers, and thereupon they named the colors and explained the make of the texture. The old minister paid great attention so that he could tell the same to the emperor when he came back to him, which he did. The impostors now wanted more money, more silk, and more gold to use in their weaving. They put it all in their own pockets, and there came no threads on the loom, but they went on as they had done before, working at the empty loom. The emperor soon set another worthy statesman to see how the weaving was getting on, and whether the cloth would soon be finished. It was the same with him as the first one. He looked and looked, but because there was nothing on the empty loom, he could see nothing. It's not, it's, is it not a beautiful piece of cloth? Asked the two impostors, and they pointed to, to and described the splendid material which was not there. Stupid I am not, thought the man, so it must be good office for which I am not fitted. It is strange, certainly, but no one must be allowed to notice it. And so he praised the cloth, which he did not see, and he expressed to them his delight at the beautiful colors and the splendid texture. 
Yes, it is quite beautiful, he said to the emperor. Everyone in the town was talking of the magnificent cloth. Now the emperor wanted to see it himself while it was still on the loom. With a great crowd of select followers, amongst whom were both the worthy statesmen who had already been there before, he went to the cunning impostors who were now weaving with all their might, but without fiber or thread. It is not splendid. Oh, I'm sorry. Is it not splendid? Said both the old statesmen who had already been there. See, your majesty, what a texture, what colors. And then he pointed to the empty loom, for they believed that the others could see the cloth quite well. What? thought the emperor. I can see nothing. This is indeed horrible. Am I stupid? Am I not fit to be emperor? That were the most dreadful thing that could happen to me. Oh, it's very beautiful, he said. It has my gracious approval. And then he nodded pleasantly and examined the empty loom, for he would not say he could see nothing. His whole court round him looked and looked and saw no more than the others. But they said, like the emperor, oh, it is beautiful. And they advised him to wear these new and magnificent clothes for the first time at the great procession, which was soon to take place. Splendid, lovely, most beautiful, went from mouth to mouth. Everyone seemed delighted over them. And the emperor gave to the impostors the title of court weavers to the emperor. Throughout the whole of the night before the morning on which the possession was to take place, the impostors were up and were working by the light of our 16 candles. The people could see that they were very busy making the emperor's new clothes ready. They pretended that they were taking the cloth from the loom, cutting with huge scissors in the air, sewed with needles without thread, and then said at last, now the clothes are finished. The emperor came himself with the most distinguished knights and each impostor held up his arm just as if he were holding something and said, see, here are the breeches, here's the coat, here's the cloak, and so on. Spun clothes are so comfortable that one would imagine one had nothing on at all. But that is the beauty of it. Yes, said all the knights, but they could see nothing, for there was nothing there. Will it please your majesty? Graciously take off your clothes, said the impostors. Then we will put on the new clothes, have before the mirror. The emperor took off his clothes and the impostors placed themselves before him as if they were putting on each part of the new clothes, which was ready. And the emperor turned and bent himself in front of the mirror. How beautifully they fit. How well they sit, said everyone. What material, what colors. It is a gorgeous suit. They are waiting outside with the canopy, which your majesty is wont to have borne over you in procession announced the master of the ceremonies. Look, I am ready, said the emperor. Doesn't it sit well? And he turned himself again to the mirror to see the finery was on all right. The chamberlains who were used to carry the train put their hands near the floor as if they were lifting up the train. Then they did as they were holding something in the air. They would not have it noticed that they could not see nothing. The emperor went along in the procession under the splendid canopy and all the people in the streets and the windows said, how matchless are the emperor's new clothes. That train fastened to his dress, how beautifully it hangs. No one wished to be noticed that he could see nothing for then they would have been unfit for their office or else very stupid. None of the emperor's clothes had met with such approval as these had, but there has nothing on, said the little child at last. Just listen to that innocent child, said her, said the father, and each one whispered to his father, neighbor what the child had said. But he has nothing on, the whole of the people called out at last. This struck the emperor, for it seemed to him as if they were right. But he thought to himself, I must go on with procession now. And the chamberlains walked along still more uprightly, holding up the train, which was nothing there at all.